Hey everybody, this is Chris here, and uh, hopefully this will go a lot better than the other recording did. Yes, we have, we've tested it and it should be working. Um, he forgot to uh, put the Skype audio, um, he forgot to uh, adjust his um, where the Skype audio was coming from in the recording, so it didn't pick me up. Yeah, so it was like I was talking to myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yes, this is going to be a gameplay uh, demo as usual. I'm Chris. With me is a friend of mine. His name's Bryant. Um, yep. And last time I was here was when Chris was doing Manamon, I believe. So yeah. So. Um. Yeah. So Entombed, for those of you that don't know, is an. I guess you could call it. Um, an RPG, uh, a dungeon crawl RPG. I guess would be the best way to d describe it. Mm -hmm. where you're going through a dungeon uh, you were thrown into a dungeon for committing some kind of a crime and you have to make your way down and try to make your way back out to the world um, this game oh gosh I think this yep. game was developed or the development started in 2008 I think I, I think found so it, yeah yeah I found it in 09, probably like August 09, when it was still in um, Yeah, I, I started, uh, Chris was, Chris played earlier than I did. I, I came in at um, probably the end of 09 uh, when it was in beta cycle, uh, 1.46. Yeah. When I started playing. Something like that. Um, yeah, now, this game is very special to me. I mean, I don't play it that much anymore, but this was the first game I played. This was the first time I really uh, played an audio game like this on a computer, and that was when I was learning t to use computers. So, yeah, this was pretty special. Um, it is commercial. You can go to blind-games.com and purchase the full game for $40, something like that. Yeah. Um, there is a demo, so you can try it. If you don't like it, you don't have to buy it. Um, yeah, so I, I guess we can get started. Oh, one more thing. The version that I'll be playing is slightly more up to date than the one that you'll find on the website. Yeah. Um I believe And what I don't know Go if ahead. you want to post a link link to this version because it's kind of hard to find. Yes, I will post the direct link in each video so that you can download the latest version. Which I guess was supposed to be a beta, but this game kind of got abandoned in 2011. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I guess I will hit enter and the <clears> intro <throat> will play. So here we go. Hopefully. The legend tells of a city lost beneath the sands. Crimson walls adorned with the rarest gems. Polished floors reflected sunlight streaming through open windows. A princess's beauty so complete it inspired the founding of an entire kingdom. But these things led to pride, jealousy, and war. Driftwood Software presents a game by Jason Allen. Oh, you yeah, had the 25th floor music. 
Yep. Yes, there are 25 floors, or I guess levels, in this game. And then we'll let you play Even the first seven. Even a civilization cannot endure while the blood of its citizens pours from its foundation. Suddenly and violently it came to an end one fateful night. Its conquerors parading survivors around the once great kingdom before silencing them forever. It is said that the grief of the gods swelled the oceans and rivers with their tears. Mountains, which had stood for millennia, parted, and the oceans washed away the envy that had consumed them. That was long ago, practically forgotten, until damp passageways were discovered in the craggy foothills lining the ocean. Rumors stirred, and many believed that these led to the lost kingdom and its riches. Over the centuries, brave explorers, royalty and peasants alike, all tried to discover the passage's source. As fewer and fewer returned, the ordeal, once considered noble and righteous, twisted to a form of punishment. For those who find themselves here, they will surely perish. The dungeon bends only to the will of the gods, and the gods do not find favor in any soul trespassing on their sacred ground. Rest well. For this night will be your last. Well. And that is the intro. Yep. Welcome to Entune version 1.05 B test. Please see wiki.blind-games.com for documentation on this version. Main menu. Start new game. Alright. Uh, this is the main menu. Exit. Oh, you, oh, you can use the left and right arrows too. Account maintenance. Exit. That's kind of cool. Start new game. Yeah, so you can use the up, down, left, or right arrows to navigate this this menu, which is kind of cool. I know that. Yeah. Load existing game. Start new game. It's both vertical and horizontal. Yeah. Exit. Start new game. Uh, so start new game. That's obvious. That lets you, well, start a game. Load existing game. This lets you load your save game. Read latest news. This is supposed to give you the latest news, but it hasn't been updated since 2010. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and let it read. Intune version 1.02 released. Check the download page at www.blind-games.com for the direct link. This update adds a large player run bazaar, a new unlockable card, some new skills, and a lot of bug fixes. Old save games are not compatible with this release. Please finish your games in progress before updating. If you have the full version of Entombed, don't forget to upgrade to the full version again after updating. Thanks and enjoy. Okay. View best adventures worldwide. View best adventures worldwide. This lets you see scoreboards, or um, it's a scoreboard that shows scores from players all across the world. View my best adventures. View your best adventures. This. Is not going to have anything in it because I haven't really played it, anything. There have been no scored adventures yet. Yeah. View my unlocked key items. This game has unlockables. No key items unlocked. Find rare objects and uncover secrets to unlock key items. View my unlocked key items. Nothing. Change my preferences. Preferences. Account maintenance. Account maintenance, which allows you to. I forgot my password. Reset your password. Change my password. And it's not saying password, right? I forgot my pa canceled account maintenance. Um, let's see. Uh, I guess we can go into preferences real quick. Change my preferences. Yeah. Background music volume. Just let you change the music volume. Music off. You can turn it off if you don't like it, or you can go all the way up. Um. Music off. I'm gonna go about there. 
Or is that too loud? Uh, turn it down just to here, I think. I like that. There, yeah. Uh, synthesis volume. Yeah, you can change the volume of the speech, which currently it's at the highest. North wind volume. Uh, South wind volume. These are wind sounds, which are used to help you navigate. I don't use them. East wind volume. And I don't know why it's saying wind. West wind volume. Door volume. The door volume for doors, which make creaking noises. Mm -hmm. And you just tab through these. Sounds volume. Now, yeah, so if you hit the up arrow, it, it's at the highest. For some reason, when you first install this, the sounds are turned way down, so you'll want to come in here and turn them up. Which really does not make sense, considering that this is an audio game. You'd think that the sounds would be on by default. Yeah. But... <laughs> I don't know. Voice synthesis rate. Your speech rate, I think I'll leave it the way it is, because this should be easy for a lot of people to understand, I think. Yeah. Change current G. You have VWK selected. I don't know why it says uh, G, but uh, yeah, this is how you change your voices now. Right now I'm using uh, Sappy 5 speech, uh, which if you don't have a good Sappy voice, well, I'm sorry, uh, you might want to get a good one. But uh, yeah, so let's see. Since I'm running this on Windows XP... You have Microsoft Sam selected. Yes. <laughs> Voice synthesis rate. Change but, current G. And that was actually yeah. the, the. I played the game with this voice. Change language. You have English selected. Change current G. You have Microsoft Sam selected. And I used. Oh God. I. I. Remember. I used to hate it. Oh man. You have VWK selected. <laughs> and those are the only two voices you, I have. You should um off stream. You should play. It with Microsoft Sam and name your character Soy. Oh, <laughs> SWAT. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so you can change your voice. So if you have voices installed, you can choose them. Change language. You have English selected. Now the only thing you have in here is English and something called test. You have test selected. The language will be changed when preferences are saved. Yeah, I don't think this is fully developed. You have English selected. The language will be change speech engine. You have Microsoft Speech API selected. Yep. So you can change the, the speech engine. You have Jaws for Windows selected. You have Window Eyes selected. You have System Access selected. The engine will be changed when preferences are saved. You, ha you, you have Microsoft Speech API selected. And you can hit control to, um, to stop that speech. Yeah, this, this does not work with NVDA. Um, no. There is a driver that you can get that basically makes any application that uses system access go through NVDA. Um, but I'm going to leave it on SAPI 5 because with SAPI 5, you don't get interrupted by key presses. And I think for this demo, that would be good. Because mm -hmm. if you're using a screen... The, the, other, the other thing I want to mention too is... Um, there is another way to change your um, your speech engines. Um, I don't know if this works in the main menu itself or if you have to actually be in a game, but I think you press Alt-J for JAWS, um, Alt-S for SAPI, and I don't know about System Access or Window Eyes. I think Window Eyes is Alt-W and System Access is Alt-A. I'm not sure about yeah, probably. the... Um... Of course, Window Eyes is gone now. Um, I don't know if, if this still works with JAWS. I don't see why not, unless they change their drivers. I'm sure it probably does still. Um, yeah, so let me tab. Auto save rate. Set this to zero to disable auto saves. Any other number to set an auto save to occur after that many battles. Auto saves disabled. Yeah, I turn off auto saves. That'll basically save your game when you complete a battle and you can set that from disabled to up to every 10 battles. Checkbox. Skip intro? Mm -hmm. No. Introduction is now off. I'm going to skip the intro so the game loads faster. Reset to default values. Save preferences. And I'm going to save. Saving preferences. Preferences saved. Change my exit. Start new game. Okay, I think uh, 
that pretty much goes through that. Uh, I guess we start now? Yep. Alright. Character creation. Please type the character's given name. Alright, now, last time I uh, decided I was going to name all my characters after authors, the ones that I don't really like. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what I named this character originally was William Shakespeare. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you can give your character a f first name and a last name, or just one name. So I'm gonna type in William. Now enter the character's family name. Uh, S H A K E S P E A R E, I think. This character's name is William Shakespeare. Is this okay? Yeah. So you hit Y or N. Is William Shakespeare a male or female? I'm gonna hit M. Choose your race. Human. Yeah, um, male and female, the only thing that does is determines what sounds play when your character gets hit. And and I should note, too, also, that, um, if you don't enter a name for yourself and you just press enter, it's gonna give you one by default, and they're usually pretty, usually kind of weird. Yeah, but. it it randomly generates them. Yeah. Oh, the other thing, uh, if you hold shift and hit enter, you will play in hard mode, which uh, tries to make it more realistic by restricting the ways that you can save. Mm -hmm. Which means if, you're, if you get killed or your character gets killed or something really bad happens, well, you can't reload. You have to deal with it. Um, yeah. You can save. If you try and save it. Yeah, go ahead. Brings you. You can't. If you try and save it, brings you to the main menu. Yep. And if your computer crashes, you lose your save game, which that I think is kind of unfair, but I guess that's kind of the price that you pay. Yeah. Um, okay, so now you can choose your race, and each race has its different set of stats, and abilities but I'll go through the ones that I have right now. Elf, human. Human. Elf. Elf. Half elf. Half elf. Ogre. Ogre. Now, by default, those are the only races that you can play in the demo. Which mm -hmm. if you if you ask me, I think the demo is pretty good actually. Yeah. You I think it gives you a good feel for the content. Um, you you can actually play Goblin in the demo too because um, you can get the Goblin card off of mob that you need. Yeah, the, the Goblin. Demo, so. Yeah, the Goblin card is an unlockable that you get when you kill a random Goblin, and it might actually happen in this game. It might not. Um, yeah. So yeah, let's see. Gnome. Gnome. Dwarf. Dwarf. Halfling. Halfling. Half orc. Half orc. Fairy. Fairy. Human. And you can't play it as a ratkin, but you have to buy the plague card mm -hmm. off of the bazaar, which the bazaar is basically a a player run shop that's online. So you can you can trade things between players. Um, yeah. Now I know um I don't know if this is the case anymore, but there used to be some bugs um, concerning the the Ratkin card. Um, I think when you, I think when you bought it, your all your other cards got deleted or something. Yeah, that's a um, bug. So if you buy it, um, you have to, and this is really weird. You have to move the file, the data file containing your unlockables, and then put it back, and it will reset your cards and give you the plague card and you'll have to unlock the rest of them so that, so that's a bug yeah and I don't think Ratkin is really worth playing no um but uh yeah so Elf, human. I'm gonna go with human choose your job fighter uh there's oh god lots and lots of jobs um I think there's 18 Fighter. Mage. Mage, that's a that's a spellcaster. Healer. Thief. Wanderer. Ranger. 
Necromancer. Necromancer, I don't know why that can't say it right. Brawler. Brawler. Bard. Bard. Monk. Monk. Barbarian. Barbarian. Assassin. Assassin, which is really, really good, but they're only mm -hmm. in, in, in the uh, <laughs> full version. You cannot play them in the demo. Paladin. No. Paladin. Fighter. Um, there's a few more. There's the, the trickster, which can charm things and make enemies attack each other. Which humans can't be. No. Mm. Uh, they can also summon animals to assist them in battle, which is not very useful. Um, mm. There's the shaman, which has some healing spells and some offensive um, attacking spells. And then there are three more jobs that you can unlock. There's druid, uh, which you unlock with the uh, by choosing a character and for your two jobs you choose ranger healer or healer ranger and I think there's the adventurer card which is the sapphire card yeah which you get by playing a character and choosing uh, thief and wanderer thief and wanderer or wanderer and, th and thief so the order yeah. does not matter you just have to have those two jobs there is um there is another job too um but and this one also needs to be unlocked um the fortune teller yep um and i think actually, which you get by defeating a boss yes and and we will actually unlock that during the course of the scam Mm -hmm. Um, mage, healer, thief, wanderer, ranger, necromancer, ranger. I'm gonna go with ranger for right now. I think a lot of the jobs yeah. are self-explanatory. Um, wanderers aren't really useful, except they can learn different abilities. It's 10:30. Oh, shut up. Well, hey, there's your time announcement. <laughs> Ranger. All right. So if it's your bedtime, you probably should. Yeah. So like, oh, listening. it's twelve o'clock. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna choose Ranger. Ranger, starting new game. And it loads. William Shakespeare slew the good unicorn of happiness while wandering through the forbidden forest and mounted its head as a trophy. For this reason, the dungeon is your new home. Your adventure has begun. Slew a unicorn of happiness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so we are in the dungeon. The music is very good. Yeah. In fact, I can't play this game without the music on. Because the music just adds... I don't know, it just adds, I guess, ambience? Yeah. But, um, yeah, so this game is turn based. So if you don't do anything, it'll just sit here. So I could sit here for the next hour and nothing would happen. Which is. Um, I guess it's a little unrealistic if you think about it, but at the same time, it's kind of nice. Yeah, I mean, it's. I'd say it's good for people that just want to take their yeah. time and go slowly. Yeah. But yeah, it, it could be a little better. Um, okay, so there's a lot of key commands. What I will say is if you hit shift. Context menu, nearest unexplored space, slash key. This, this gives you a big list of commands. Location, L. Location. Character status. C. Character information. You hit C. Inventory. I. I to access your inventory. Equipment. E. Equipment. Magic. M. Magic menu. I think that works outside of combat. Pick up items. G. Search. Z. Search. That allows you to search for uh, rooms that contain chests or hidden shops. Which actually, I don't think there are hidden shops, are there? 
There are, um, but they are like very, 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 very rare. Um, I've only ran across them like literally twice probably in my various playthroughs of the game. Very. Um, I think I think there are still shops, but they're like extremely rare. Yeah. So. Rest. Are. I know there was a lot more in the uh, beta cycles. There, there were. There was a lot of cool stuff in the betas that he either took out or toned down, which I don't, which I'm kind of mad about. But yeah. Yeah. Um, so you can rest. That allows you to heal. Save game F5. Save game F5. Nearest unexplored space slash key. And that's about it. Um, when you're in a room with a stairwell, it will show you the comma period. Or yeah, the comma key to go up and period to go down. Now I believe you can also hit enter, right? Nearest unexplored space north one. Yeah, so if you want to run commands like this, you can do it. I think it's kind of slow, but if you can't... Yeah. If you can't do hotkeys, and I guess <laughs> this will work. Um, Saving game. Save completed. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save the game by hitting F5. Also, if you hit escape... Options menu. Save game. Save game. Exit. Oh yeah, and this is vertical and horizontal as well, so you can use the up, down, left, or right keys. Save game. I guess this works everywhere. I didn't know that. Load game. I didn't either. Save game, load game. Change preferences. Preferences. Return to title. That takes you back to the main menu. Exit. And you're back to exit. Cancelled. Uh, okay. So... A couple more things I'll show you before we get started. I'm gonna hit C. William Shakespeare's character details. Allocate skill points. So this is a menu. Uh, yes, you have skill points that you can use to improve your skills. General information. This tells you what your character is. William Shakespeare is a male human ranger. Health status. Health information. Character statistics. Stats. Experience. William Shakespeare is level one and needs 500 experience to attain level two. Ex jobs. And jobs. Allocate jobs. Ranger. If you go in here. Description. You can get more information about your jobs. A true ranger is said to be a child of the wilderness. Taught from a young age to handle bows. The ranger's skill is unmatched. Yep. Abilities. Abilities is lists your different abilities. Skills. And skills. I'm not going to go through all this just to save time, but uh, you, I think you get the idea. Cancelled. Swords also, rangers also uh, specialize in the usage of long swords, I believe. Yes, let me show you the skills menu. General allocate. William Shakespeare has one skill point. The following skills can be improved. Multi-shot. Level 1 of 5. Multi-shot. True shot. Level 1 of 5. Yeah, and you start out with a skill point by default. Leather armor. Level 1 of 5. Leather armor. Archery. Level 1 of 5. Swords. Level 0 of 5. Levels... Zero. That's weird. I didn't know that. Current changes. Yeah, I don't know. So, so when it usually when it says level zero, um, that means that in order to actually acquire the skill, you need to um, put a couple of points into it. For example, um, I believe if you press enter on a skill, it's going to tell you um, it's going to tell you how much. It costs to acquire. Um, so I believe the sword skill would cost you like two points. And once you put the two points into it, it's going to be at level one. And then from then on, I think you can raise it with just a single skill point. Yep. And it's so. important to note too that you only get 20 skill points because there's only 20 levels in this game. Yeah. So spend your points wisely. Yep. Uh, yeah, let me hit enter. Sword. Arch. Sword. Uh, oh, that doesn't. Current changes. I guess you have to do I it from was... the skills menu. Yeah, oh, yeah I think probably. you go to jobs and then you go to skills and you can press enter and it will tell you information. Um, yeah. I'm going to actually. Multi confirm changes. Multi shot. Level 1 of 5. Confirm changes. I'm going to actually. Skill point. Gen allocate skill points. I'm going to save that skill point.
Cancelled. Because I'm going to play as a ranger assassin, and you get a secondary job at level two. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm going to start walking. So you walk around with the arrow keys. There's a door. There's a wall. There is a stairway down here. Oh, so I could go to the second floor. Already? Oh. Yeah. Now, you could do this all the time, but I I like the explored space feature. If you hit slash. Nearest unexplored space. West. Three. That will help you find Encounter areas. Encounter three enemies. William's pet. Cave bat three. Cave bat has been sent spiraling to the ground. Eight damage. The cave bat's torso is mangled. The cave bat has been defeated. Cave bat two. William's pet. Light damage. Cave bat one. William Shakespeare. Left arm. One damage. William Shakespeare. Fight. And yeah, you do have a pet. I guess it's a it's a wolf that you befriend somewhere, and that will assist you in combat. Um. William Shakespeare's dubious wolf leather sling needs ammunition. Good five basalt rocks. And yeah, if you're a ranger, you get a a sling. Selected good five techniques. I'm gonna actually hit E. Head. This gives you the equipment screen where you can change items that your character is using. Torso. Torso. Left arm. Right arm. Left hand. You are holding a dubious wolf leather sling in your. Remove dubious. You removed a dubious wolf leather sling. Techniques. Fight. Cave bat one. So now I'm using my fists. Cave bat has been sent spiraling to the ground. Head. Five damage. The cave bat's head is shattered. The cave bat has been defeated. William's pet. Cave bat two. Cave bat has been sent spiraling to the ground. Eight damage. The cave. And uh, yeah, when you're in combat, it's just a. You choose options from a menu. Resting. Yeah. Resting just completed. Hit R. There we go. Now I should be healed. Nearest unexplored space. North. Four. East. Five. You can also hit S to check the status of your characters. Status. William Shakespeare. 100 out of 100 health. William's pet. 165 out of 165 health. William Shakespeare. Cancelled. Now, something else I want to show real quick, so I'm going to hit C. William Shakespeare. William's pet's character details. General information. And I hit tab to switch to the second party member. So this is my pet. William's pet is a female wolf four. Oh, female wolf this time. Health status. That's interesting. Yeah, so every time you start a new game or even load your game, you're going to get random stuff. Like, everything is random. Can't explain. Yeah. Rename. Uh, let me rename my pet. Please type the character's given name. Let's see, what should I name this? Uh... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, any any female authors you don't like? Harper Lee. Why not? Yeah. Oh, whoops. Harper. Now enter the character's family name. This character's name is Harper Lee. Is this okay? Yep. William's pet is now called Harper Lee. Yep. General information. <laughs> Harper Lee's a female wolf four. Health status. Character's experience. You can also view experience, all the same stuff. Rename. Obviously, since the pet is an animal, it doesn't really have a job or a skill set. Cancelled. Um, it starts to improve slightly, though, when it... Slightly. When it levels. Yes, yeah. unexplored space. East. One. Yeah, it's, it's useful for about a quarter of the way through the game. I usually end up changing it into something else, which you can do with yeah, you can certain things. Reincarnate it or transform it. Yeah. So yeah, so you just walk around, and from time to time you'll get creatures that just appear. Nearest unexplored space, east one. And I'm just exploring the floor. Oop, there's an item. I'm gonna hit G. The following items are lying here. Three magic potions. Three healing potions. Three magic potions. You've picked up three. You've picked up three healing potions. Let me grab that. That stuff's useful. Oh. 
per 12 black with arrows. Unidentified scroll per 12. You've picked up a per 12 black with arrows. You've picked some arrows. Where's all the enemies? Nearest unexplored space. South, six, west, four, north. Encountered four enemies. Oh. Harper Lee, cave bat four. Cave bat has been sent spiraling to the ground. Eight damage. The cave bat's torso is mangled. The cave bat has been defeated. William Shakespeare, fight. Cave bat one. Cave bat has been sent spiraling to the ground. Three damage. Badly injured. Five damage. The cave bat's torso is mangled. The cave bat has been defeated. Cave bat three. Harper Lee, one damage. Cave Bat 2, William Shakespeare, 1 damage. Harper Lee, Cave Bat 3, Cave Bat has been sent spiraling to the ground, 8 damage. The Cave Bat's torso is mangled, the Cave Bat has been defeated, William Shakespeare, fight. Cave, cave Bat has been sent spiraling to the ground, 4 damage. The Cave Bat's torso is mangled, the Cave Bat has been defeated, 80 experience awarded. Okay. Resting. Resting completed. Nearest unexplored space. South, two, west, four, north, one. And there is a, I think, in terms of enemies, each floor probably has, I want to say up to like 20 to 25 enemies. Yeah. That can come at you in various group sizes. So you could have one enemy, two enemies, three enemies, sometimes four enemies, very rarely five enemies. Encounter three mm -hmm. enemies. William Shakespeare, fight. Cave that one. And once you Except kill the twenty fifth floor, which has like two hundred. Yeah, the twenty fifth floor is ginormous, and it has two hundred things to kill. Cave that has been sent spiraling to the ground. Right foot, four damage. The cave that's right foot is shattered. Five damage. The cave that's torso is mangled. The cave that has been defeated. Harper Lee, cave that three. Cave that has been sent spiraling to the ground. Eight damage. The cave that's torso is mangled. The cave that has been defeated. Cave that two. William Shakespeare, one damage. Harper Lee, cave that two. Cave that has been sent spiraling to the ground. Eight damage. The cave that's torso is mangled. The cave that has been defeated. Sixty experience awarded. Uh, so nearest unexplored space, north one. Yeah, once once you kill everything on a floor, you won't get creatures when you walk around. We've only seen cave bat so far. Yeah, this floor only has two types of enemies, and as you progress, you'll get more and more types, and eventually you'll stop seeing some creatures. I guess because they die out, because you kill them all. Encountered three yeah. enemies. Cobalt two, Harper Lee, one damage. Cobalt mage, Harper Lee, light damage. Cobalt one, Harper Lee. Harper Lee, Cobalt mage, eight damage, badly injured. William Shakespeare, fight, Cobalt one. Yeah, so these are Cobalds, Cobalds, I don't know how you pronounce that. Cobalt mage. Cobalt two. So you can choose anything that you want to kill. Cobalt mage. You don't can really hit know X. what they are either, do you? I think they're they're little. Um, I think they're smaller humanoids. That's something I wish this game had was better descriptions of creatures. Yeah. Because you can examine creatures if you hit X, but it only tells you. Well, listen. This is a female cobalt mage. She appears badly injured. She is wearing a dubious larch wood buckler on her left arm. She is wielding a poor basalt club in her left hand. She has no serious injuries. Yeah, it just gives you very generic information. Mm -hmm. Cobalt Mage has been sent sprawling through the air. Four damage. Critically injured. Cobalt 2. William Shakespeare. Right arm. One damage. Cobalt Mage. Cobalt Mage casts grow. Cobalt grows to incredible size. Cobalt 1. William Shakespeare. Harper Lee. Cobalt 2. Eight damage. Badly injured. William Shakespeare. Fight. Cobalt 1. Cobalt has been sent sprawling through the air. Four damage. Four damage. Badly injured. Cobalt one. Harper Lee. Cobalt two. William Shakespeare. One damage. Cobalt mage. Harper Lee. Harper Lee. Cobalt mage. Seven damage. The cobalt mage's torso is mangled. The cobalt mage has been defeated. William Shakespeare. Fight. Cobalt five damage. Critically injured. Just kill these things. Cobalt two. William Shakespeare. One damage. Cobalt one. Harper Lee. Harper Lee. Cobalt two. Eight damage. The cobalt has been defeated. Grow has faded from the Cobalt. William Shakespeare, fight. Now there's something else I want to point out really quickly. Um, instead of just hitting enter on things and having your character target randomly, you can hold down specific keys and target specific body parts. 
Um, yeah. I think one and three target the legs or the lower half of the, the body. So if you're fighting animals, it'll target the back legs and I think the tail. Or, uh, no. Just the back legs or feet. Mm -hmm. two, uh, two targets the waist on humanoids and I think the tail on animals pressing and holding five while you hit enter targets the center of the body so your torso four and six target the left and right upper sections so for a humanoid that would be the arms and the hands etc and eight targets the head area now a, I don't think seven does anything I don't think so and you can use either the numeric keypad if you have one or the top row of numbers to do this and just a tip yeah. if you want something to go down really quickly uh, target the head if the head gets hit too much they go down which is realistic um, also if you're fighting really difficult mobs like um, quest mobs or whatever that have like really powerful weapons it might be beneficial to target their um, their arms or hands because those are one of the weakest parts of their body I think yep and if you can so. damage those enough they will drop their weapons Mm -hmm. Cobalt one. Four damage. The Cobalt has been defeated. 225 experience awarded. Okay. Nearest unexplored space. West. One. There is a stairway down here. Nearest unexplored space. East. One. North. Two. East. One. And yeah, these these rooms are empty. Yeah. Which I don't know if I like that. Three doors. One door on the south wall. One unexplored. Two doors on the west wall. Zero unexplored. So you can hit X when you're in a room and it'll tell you how many doors it has. There is a stairway down. Ooh. Encounter two enemies. Oh. Harper Lee. Cobalt Thief. In a Eat doorway. Abby injured. Cobalt Thief. Cobalt Thief uses hide. Cobalt Thief slips into the shadows. Cobalt 1. William Shakespeare. Right leg. One damage. William Shakespeare. Fight. And actually, these, these creatures do have... Um, Weapons, but I usually ignore it because for the first part of the game, you usually get crap. Cobalt, Cobalt one. Yeah. One Believe damage. it or not, I actually found Harper a legendary Cobalt weapon one. on like the Eight third floor. Oh wow! Eight. William Shakespeare. Sneak attack. Five damage. Injured. Yeah, Cobalt it was a great act Cobalt actually. Eight. William Shakespeare. Fight. Oh wow! Cobalt one. That just goes to show you that the randomness can do quite yeah. a lot of things. Cobalt one. Harper Lee. Cobalt Thief. Cobalt Thief uses high. Oh, Cobalt Thief slips into the shadows. Harper Lee. Cobalt 1. William Shakespeare. Fight. And it's also important to note that your character does not die when your total health goes to zero. Depending on which parts of your body have been hit, well, yeah, you could die quickly or really slowly. Yeah. Because your, your health is... To distributed across your entire body. Technique fight. And certain races have health, have more health um, on like their certain body parts and stuff, depending on their their overall health. Yeah. Cobalt one. Cobalt has been sent sprawling through the air. Five damage. Critically injured. Four damage. The cobalt's torso is mangled. The cobalt has been defeated. Cobalt thief. William Shakespeare. Oh, Sneak crap. attack. Five damage. Injured. Hide has faded from the cobalt thief. Harper Lee. Cobalt thief. Eight damage. The cobalt thief has been defeated. One hundred fifty experience awarded. Collected one gold. William Shakespeare has attained level two. William Shakespeare's attributes have improved. Gained three hit points. Gained four magic points. William Shakespeare now has two skill points. William Shakespeare is now experienced enough for a second job. Harper Lee has attained level 2. Harper Lee's attributes have improved. Gain 8 hit points. Yeah. William L. Choose. So now you can choose a job. Select a secondary job for the human ranger William Shakespeare. Mate healer. The human ranger William Shakespeare. The wanderer, necromant, brawler. <laughs> Bard, monk, barbarian, assassin. 
Now let's choose assassin. William Shakespeare is now a ranger assassin. William William Shakespeare has two confirmed changes. And the skill that I'm gonna allocate. Dual wheel, sneak attack, critical hit, sneak attack. Level one of five. Is sneak attack. And I don't know if I said this before, but if I haven't, to increase the skill, you hit equals. To decrease it, you hit dash. Sneak attack has increased to level yeah. two. Sneak attack. Level two of five. Sneak attack has increased to level three. William Shakespeare has no more skill points to spend. Do confirm changes. Skill help. Let's uh, canceled. Resting. Save that. Resting completed. And saving game. Save completed. As an so assassin. let me. Oh, yeah. sorry. No, it's okay. Go um, ahead. I just want to make one more point about um about jobs. Um, depending on your starting job, um, and also your secondary job, um, affects your stat increases. So, for example, if you were a fighter, you might get more hit points when you level up versus if you were a um, a magic user, you wouldn't get as many you wouldn't get as many hit points. On the other hand, if you were a magic user as a first job, you would probably get more magic points when you level up versus hit points. Yeah. So And also it's 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 really important to choose your jobs correctly because while you might be able to say choose a caster as your primary and then Hider as your second. Sorry about that. Um, you won't get all the abilities that the fighter has. No. I don't think. Like, you don't get the armor skills, so... Keep that in mind. When you're creating your character, you know, you want to choose what you want your character to do. You can't use a lot of the weapons that a fighter would be able to use either if you, if you were second-class fighter. No. So. So yeah, that that is very important, and you usually don't want to mix caster and combat classes because they usually don't no. go together that well. Anyway. This floor has been completely explored. Okay, good. So now I'm gonna hit uh, period. If I actually hit comma. There is no stairway up from here. Stairway down west three. There is a stairway down here. All right. Saving game. Save completed. I'm going to save. And actually, I think I'm going to end this video here. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, when we come back, we will tackle the second floor. Yep. And until then, you guys take care. Bye.